こんにちは。はじめまして。私はイジです。Hello, I'm Nur Iziani and today I feel so happy to share with you、uh, some amazing facts about Mycobacterium species. So, let's begin. Mycobacterium species have long been recognized as a significant source of morbidity and mortality in finfish aquaculture as well as in wild finfishes. Mycobacteriosis results from infection by several species of mycobacterium that are Arabic, gram positive, pleomorphic roots. Which are members of the order Actinomycetes and family Mycobacteriaceae and Pleomorphic. Yeah, Pleomorphic means variability in the size and shape of cells due to its ability to alter their shape or size in response to environmental conditions. Mycobacteriosis is a chronic, systemic, Granulomatous disease that occurs in aquarium, particularly those reared under intensive conditions. Granulomatous? Mm hmm. Granulomatous means the granulomas form when the immune system attempts to wall off substances it perceives as foreign but is unable to eliminate. Mycobacteria are widespread in the environment. Particularly in aquatic reservoir, the two most important species causing mycobacteriosis in fish and humans are Mycobacterium marinum and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So let's focus on Mycobacterium marinum. Mycobacterium marinum was first recognized in 1926 from the liver, spleen, and kidney of. Tropical coral fish kept in Philadelphia Aquarium. Mycobacterium marinum also can grow prolifically within fibroblasts, epithelial cells, and macrophages. In the past, human outbreaks of Mycobacterium marinum were sporadic and most commonly associated with contaminated swimming pools. Luckily, Chlorination practices used today have greatly minimized the frequency of outbreaks from these sources. In the last decade, a small but steady increase in the frequency of Mycobacterium marinum infections in cultured or hatchery confined fish and human cases associated with fish aquaria has been noted. Mycobacterium marinum is Ubiquitous and is found worldwide in water bodies. One survey found that more than 67% of water specimens collected from natural, treated, and animal contact sources contain mycobacteria, including Mycobacteria marinum. So, the source of Mycobacteria marinum infection is contaminated water sources. In fish, Transmission can occur by consumption of contaminated feed, cannibalism of infected fish, or entry via injuries. Meanwhile, in viviparous fishes, trans ovarian transmission has also been reported. Oh, wait, did you still remember the terms viviparous? Yeah, well done. And the terms transovarian transmission means the passage of parasites or infective agents from the maternal body to eggs within the ovaries. Okay, back to the topic. Snails and other invertebrate organisms have been shown to play a role in the transmission of mycobacterium. And in humans, breaks in the skin serve as an entry point for the organism during contact with contaminated water sources or infected fish. This is most common during cleaning or maintenance of aquariums. Huh, 
Did you know that? Mycobacterium marinum can remain viable in the environment such as soil and water for two years or more, or in carcass and organs up to one year. This can lead to the possible indirect transfer of the organism, as was reported in a case of exposure from bathtub where the family's tropical fish tank was frequently clean and an outbreak of mycobacteriosis in lizards kept in contaminated fish aquarium. All species of fish are susceptible to mycobacteriosis and it has been described from a wide variety of aquarium fish. Outbreaks are most common in tropical aquarium fish. Members of several freshwater families such as Anabantidae, Karasidae, and Cypriidae appear to be particularly susceptible. Intensively cultured warm water fish species are also very susceptible. Drug therapy in fish is of limited value for this disease and vary in their degree of success. Treatment will not eliminate mycobacterium from affected fish colonies. Infection is only completely controlled by culling the affected fish population and disinfecting tanks and equipment associated with these animals. As the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. So, we need to prevent this mycobacterium. Prevention measures involve sanitation, disinfection and destruction of carrier fishes. Fish should be obtained from farms known to be free of diseases. Imported fish should require a period of quarantine. If trash fish or dead fish carcasses are used as a source of protein in the feed for fish, it should be heated at 76 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to kill any pathogenic mycobacteria. Dead fish should be destroyed by burning or burying in quicklime. There are no vaccines for fish mycobacteriosis. That's all for now. Thank you.